over the Brewer's Estate, Bruce's Estate. But also um, there are about 670 plots, of which about 560 are tenanted. 10% 10 of the plots have been given over to wildlife and 10% to community projects. And this is the entrance to one of the community uh, projects on the St. Anne's allotments. It's a community orchard, which is used for, uh, for, for the community. Apple. They have a, a lovely apple orchard. They also have, on a Sunday, a third Sunday of the month, it's open for local children to play. There are two staff employed who run uh, projects during the week as well for local schools and community groups and it is a really lovely space. They, there's a small uh, stream, a ragbeck, well it's called the ragbeck, flowing through the community orchard and that historically was believed to have uh, medicinal properties and people used to come and put it, particularly on their eyes, they seemed to think it would cure eye diseases. <coughs> Got your bottle, Dur David. <laughs> during <laughs> during the years of um, over the past few years, Mo and some of the volunteers have done quite a lot of research into the history of St Anne's, and the first date that we can find evidence of people actually using this area is 1304 to 1305, when a parcel of land here was rented by uh, Ralph de Perowich from an. Anna, oh sorry, I'm going to forget, have to check the name, uh, Anna Billa and John Oakley, I, can, I always want to call her Annalisa because the um, <laughs> lady in the office called Annalisa. Uh, then after that, in 1605, we have evidence that this same area of land was split into 30 parcels of land and rented for the sum of £15 a year to uh, the Burgesses of Nottingham, 30 Burgesses at a uh, quite a costly sum of £15 a year. They used this land to uh, mainly graze animals because it was seen as quite poor quality land in those days. So that's, that's some of the history that we have. We're going to carry on uh, and as I go around, I'll add on to uh, talk about more of the history and also what's happening here at the moment. But we're now... Example of what we should be doing. Oh, right. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
They used to like you keep chicken for more time, then there's not around for stopping it. And, you know, I never did. So they're African. My next door neighbour goes to Zimbabwe a couple of times a year and he brings up the food. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'll start. I'll start. Right, well, carry on, just rapidly. The plots were the allotment site was laid out in this fashion, in uh, in the way you can see it now, in the 1830s. At that time, uh, people who were quite well off in Nottingham, because of the uh, the fact that the city was enclosed, they could, even though they might have had a big house, most of them didn't have gardens. So it was seen that having a garden and outside space to relax in was a good idea. And these allotments were set up as guinea gardens. People would pay a guinea and they would get a mm. garden to, to, to relax in. And at that time, most of the people would have uh, laid them out in the way that we, uh, in these days, would lay out our garden with lawns. Mm. They built lovely summer houses and they would come up here to, uh, to enjoy out the outdoors and also to take tea and to, to perhaps show off to other people in Nottingham to show that they were wealthy enough to have one of these nice gardens. And as you probably noticed, some of the roadways are named or numbered, most of them just first, second, third, fourth. But this is called Fifth Avenue and it's known as Gentleman's Avenue. This was seen as the best plot uh, site to have your plot. So on a Sunday, these wealthy families would come here in their Sunday best to, to show off to other people. And I, I imagine at the time they weren't doing the gardening themselves, they were hiring other people to grow flowers, probably not vegetables, but to, to make their gardens lovely. Who were the actual owners of the land? I mean, it's the council. Council. council is, yeah, council yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole area. And they still do. Yeah. Uh, so these gardens, as you can see, are a lot bigger and very different in style to other allotments that you can see elsewhere in the city and across the country. Um, they, in the 1850s, the St Anne's Row show was uh, started. People knew about St Anne's Row show all over the country and people used to flock here to go to the, the mm. St Anne's Row show, which I think was held once a year. One of the volunteers has done some research into it and she's found where the actual uh, show was held every year and the types of roses grown. And at that time, the allotments would have been full of flowers mm. uh, for people to, to enjoy. Um, we're going to start walking up this hill. It is quite steep, but it does ease, ease off a little bit as you get over the brow of the hill. And then I'll talk. From the uh, ladies and gentlemen who used it in the 1830s, after 1845 and the Enclosure Act, it, it meant that a lot of land just around the city centre was freed up for housing and places like Mapley Park, the park. Uh, started being built and people who had that sort of money were had their gardens next to their houses so after that it was used by people who genuinely needed to feed their families so they were more like allotment holders today uh, they moved on to the site and, and started growing vegetables uh, then after that obviously in the first and second world war it, they were fully utilized uh, Part of in the Second World War is a dig for victory, which you'll see more of in the heritage gardens where we, we're going to go next. Um, in fact, actually, I think we should go straight to the heritage gardens because there are plot, uh, boards there that explain more about the history. Um, there's also a beautiful summer house uh, which has been restored and also a glass house that has been restored, um, which is really... Um, really quite special so if we go there then you can have a, a wander around mm. up at the heritage display plot it's also known as charlie's oliver's plot 
uh, as a gentleman called Tom Oliver used to garden here for a long time. So it's been named after him. As you can see, there's a, a lovely glass house, which we believe dates back to about 1835. Uh, they believe that it was elsewhere in the allotments and then transported up here. I'm not sure how, but it was. And there's also a summer house, which is divided into two. Uh, the back area is um, more traditional and the front area is sort of a 60s addition, they believe. Um, one, of, one of the projects that has happened over the past few years is to go around <coughs> some of the summer houses and try and work out uh, how old they are, which is quite difficult because, as, uh, as you can just see in Angela's plot, people reuse materials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the fact that there's an old stove in a summer house doesn't necessarily mean that it's been here mm. for a long time. Mm. Uh, so one of the projects was to look at the old map that had buildings on the map and then see what still remains on those sites. Mm -hmm. um, as you, as uh, you're probably aware, in the 70s, allotments declined and became less popular. And there were quite a few suggestions of releasing more of the land for building. Mm -hmm. In 1993, the allotments campaign group was set up. And they campaigned very long and hard to protect these allotments. And in 2001, they got uh, heritage status, grade two star listed, and also they won some money from the uh, big lottery fund. And that has funded a lot of the work on the security gates that you've probably seen. Yeah. Uh, yeah also yeah. tarmacking some of the roads, yeah. putting in the water system, which yeah. you probably notice as you walk yeah. around, yeah. Yeah. and also um, some of the maintenance work in the in the gardens. Yes. But anyway, um, this is a, it's a borehole, yes. Yeah. yes. So it, this is the heritage plot, so if you want to have a wander around, and if you want to ask about the actual planting, there's several volunteers here today who are actually working on the plot, so they know more about it than I do. What are these? Oh, Thank you. 